Okay, 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 okay. Day 98 of the 100 Days of Narration Challenge. I don't have time to do this. I am hacking right now, and uh, I need to go to sleep in a couple hours, so I wake up nice and early. Um, so, But by the time you hear this, um, I'll probably be dead. On a plane, on a plane, not dead. Maybe dead on a plane, who knows. Uh, hopefully not that, though. On a plane over to Los Angeles. So by the time you hear this, I will be on a plane. So I want to record this as quickly as possible because I still haven't had a chance to play The Last of Us. And suddenly people are casting me in stuff that I need to record for immediately. Otherwise, the deadline will be due before I am back from my trip from the United States. And it's madness. It's all freaking madness. Frike. Frike? That's not even a real swear word. Okay, so uh, uh, today's book, today's book is going to be um, To Kill a Mockingbird by uh, Harper Lee, uh, the only book she ever wrote, I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, why did I choose this book? Mainly because uh, it's one of the books that I read in high school. It, it's one of those books, you know, um, there are certain books that um, when you read them, I, I mean, in high school, we read a lot of classic literature stuff and whatever, and... Um, Nothing really, really stuck out for me. Nothing really stuck in my brain until I read To Kill a Mockingbird. And uh, this this just this just really took control of my preteen or or basic or or barely teen brain and just did not let go. Uh, this along with Lord of the Flies, which I also should probably get at some point. I actually bought a new copy of um of uh, of the Kill a Mockingbird because I just realized I don't have a copy of the Kill a Mockingbird on my shelf, and that is a horrible uh, absence uh to have on your bookshelf when especially when you have stuff like like Dragonlance and um. Horrible books like that. I should probably just get rid of my Dragonlance section of, li of my library. <laughs> library. Yeah, two shelves is a library. Right. Um. Anyway, so To Kill a Mockingbird. What is To Kill a Mockingbird all about? Well, some of you may have probably seen the uh, black and white movie uh, with, uh, Gregory Pre with Gregory Peck uh, as Atticus Finch, uh, one of the best characters of all time. And... um. Yeah, best characters, best played by one of the finest actors uh, in cinematic history as well. Gregory Peck. Awesome, awesome, awesome man. Awesome old school actor and uh, love him to death. Uh, and he's already de already dead, so there is no need to love him to death because he's already he's already passed on from this particular world. At least I think he has. He has to have. He's, he's way too old to still be alive. Is he alive? I don't think so. Is he? I don't know. No, probably not. Anyway, um, yeah, so uh, what is The Mockingbird all about? Uh, somebody, what is To Kill a Mockingbird all about? Uh, let's read a blurb, shall we? Shoot all the blue jays you want, if you can hit them. But remember, it's a sin to kill a mockingbird. Atticus Finch gives this, advi his advi this advice to his children as he defends the real mockingbird of this classic novel, a black man charged with the... Sorry, that that's my dad. He's a uh, he's a bit uh, fluey and coffee and sickly poos and God, I hope I don't get sickly poo poos on this trip. I have packed. I'm sorry to interrupt my reading here, but I have packed like uh, 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 Panadol. Wait, you guys don't know what Panadol is. Tylenol, um, like Tylenol, Strepsils, uh, a, a lemon, a lemon and lime. No, just lemon herbal tea. Um, I even packed Tiger Bomb. Uh, which I have to put in my uh, 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 check-in luggage. I can't put in my carry-on because it's it's sort of a liquidy paste. Well, it's more of a paste, but I don't think they'll let me uh, bring that on uh, on check-in luggage. And um, yeah, I I do not want to be sick on this trip because you know that would be horrible to be sick to go all the way to LA and go, yay, I'm here and now I'm sick. So. Hopefully I won't get sick. But let's go on with this reading. I'm not even sure if you can hear my dad coughing, so I may have just I may have just gone on that tangent for absolutely no reason. My god, I'm wasting too much time. Uh too much time, too much time, sorry. Shoot all the blue jays you want if you can hit them, but remember, it's a sin to kill a mockingbird. Atticus Finch gives this advice to his children, as he defends the real mockingbird of this classic novel. A black man charged with attacking a white girl. 
Through the eyes of Scout and Jem Finch, Lee explores the issues of race and class in the deep south of the 1930s with compassion and humor. She also creates one of the great heroes of literature in her father, whose lone str- sorry in their father, whose lone struggle for justice pricks the conscience, pricks the conscience of a town steeped in prejudice and hypocrisy. You can probably guess why I like this book so much because, because there's nothing quite like um, there's nothing quite like reading about injustice. You know, when you're young, you don't you don't necessarily understand injustice or or the idea that sometimes bad things happen to good people and sometimes good things happen to bad people, and hopefully and hopefully by the end of the book things work out. That might be a spoiler, or it might not be a spoiler. You don't know. I don't know. Anyway, um, I guess I'll do the whole like reading from the start again because uh, st- st- popping in the middle of the Kill Mockingbird would seem. Uh, I don't know. It'll be. It'll be. No, I'm. Do- I'm. Go- I'm gonna start from the beginning. Sorry, folks. Uh, I would do. It- yeah. Do it. Have some page flipping. Have some page flipping, and then I'm just gonna read from the beginning. When I was. When he was nearly thirteen, my brother Jem got his arm badly broken at the elbow. When it healed, and Jem's fears of never being able to play football were a sage, he was seldom self-conscious about his injury. His left arm was somewhat shorter than his right when he stood or walked. The back of his hand was at right angles to his body, his thumb parallel to his thigh. He couldn't have cared less, so long as he could pass and punt. When enough years had gone by to enable us to look back on them, we sometimes discussed the adve- we sometimes discussed the events leading to this accident. I maintain that the evils, evils, evils. I maintain that the evils started at all, but Jem, who was four years my senior, said it started long before that. He said he said it began in the summer. He said he he said it began the summer drill, drill. He said it began the summer Dill came to us when Dill was ski. When Dill first gave us the idea of making Boo Radley come out, I said if he wanted to take a broad view of the thing, it really began with Andrew Jackson. If General Jackson hadn't run the creeks up the, if General Jackson hadn't run the creeks up the creek, Simon Finch would never have paddled up the, Simon Finch would never have paddled up the Alabama, and where would we be if he hadn't? We were far too old to settle an argument with a fist fight, so we consulted Atticus. Our father said we were both right. Being southerners, being southerners, southerners. Wow, couldn't you just say from the south? Being southerners, it was a source of shame to some members of the family that we had no recorded ancestors on either side of the Battle of Hastings. All we had was Simon Finch, a fur-trapping apothecary. Apothecary? Apothecary. Apothecary. God, I keep forgetting how to say that word. All we had was Simon Finch, a fur-trapping apothecary from Cornwall, whose piety was exceeded only by his stinginess. In England, Simon was irritated by the persecution of those who called themselves Methodists at the hands of their, at the hands of their more liberal brethren, and as Simon and and as Simon called himself a Methodist, he worked his way across turn a page. He worked his way across the Atlantic to Philadelphia, thence to Jamaica, thence to Mobile, Mobile, Mobile. I, uh, I'm assuming that's an actual name of an actual place. Thence to Mobile and up to and up the Saint Stephen's, mindful of John Wesley's strictures on the use of many words in buying and selling. Simon made a pile practicing medicine, but in this pursuit he was unhappy lest he be tempted into doing what he knew was not for the glory of God, as the putting on of gold and costly apparel. So Simon, having forgotten his teacher's dictum on the possession of human chattels, 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 c h a t t e l s. I think I know what that word means, but I don't know how to pronounce it. Chattels, chattels. I'm going to say chattels. Bought three slaves and, with their aid, established a homestead on the banks of the Alabama River, some forty miles above Saint Stephen's. He returned to Saint Steve. He returned to Saint Stephen's only once to find a wife, 
and with her established a line that ran high to daughters. Simon lived to an impressive age and died rich. It was customary for the men in the family to remain on Simon's homestead, Finch's Landing, and make their living from cotton. The place was self-sufficient, modest in comparison with the empires around it. The landing nevertheless produced everything required to sustain life except ice, wheat flour, and articles of clothing supplied by riverboats from Mobile. Simon would have regarded with impudent, f impudent fury... Simon would have regarded with impotent fury the disturbance between the North and the South, as it left his descendants stripped of everything but their land. Yet the tradition of living on the land contained, sorry, yet the yet the tradition of living on the land remained unbroken until well into the twentieth century, until well into the twentieth century, when my father Atticus Finch went to went to Montgomery to read law, and his younger brother went to Boston to study medicine. Their sister Alexandra was the Finch who remained at the landing. She married a taciturn man who spent most of his time who spent most of his time lying in a hammock by the river, wondering if his trot lines were full. When my father was admitted to the bar, he returned to Maycomb and began his practice. Maycomb, some twenty miles east of Finch Maycomb, some twenty miles east of Finch Maycomb, ah, uh, dear Lord, Maycomb, some twenty miles east of Finch's Landing, was the country seat of was the country seat of Maycomb County. Atticus's office, Atticus's office in the courthouse, contained little more than ha sorry, let's try that again. Atticus's office in the courthouse contained little more than a hat rack, a spittoon, a checkerboard, and an unsullied code of Alabama. Cough, cough, cough. His first two clients were the last two people. His first two clients were the last two persons hanged in the Maycomb County Jail. Atticus had urged them to accept the. Atticus had urged them to accept the state's generosity in allowing them to plead guilty to second-degree murder. And escape with their lives, but they were Haverfords. In Maycomb country, a name synonymous with jackass. The Haverfords had dispatched Maycomb's leading blacksmith in a misunderstanding arising from the alleged wrongful detentions uh sorry, arising from the alleged wrongful detention of a mare were imprudent enough to do it were imprudent enough to do it in the presence of three witnesses, and insisted that the son of a bitch had it coming to him was a good enough defense for anybody. They persisted in pleading not guilty to first-degree murder, so there was nothing much Atticus could do for his clients except be present at their departure on a ca an occasion that was probably the beginning of my father's profound distaste for the practice of criminal law. During his first five years in Maycomb, Atticus practiced economy more than anything. For several years thereafter, he invested his father's education— John Hale Finch was ten years younger than my father, and chose to study medicine at a time when cotton was no, at a time when cotton was not worth growing. But after getting, but after getting Uncle Jack started, Atticus derived a reasonable income from the law. He liked Maycomb. He was Maycomb country. Sorry, he was Maycomb country county. Sorry, rather, he was Maycomb county born and bred. He knew his people. They knew him. And because of Simon Finch's industry, Atticus was related by blood or marriage to nearly every family in the town. Maycomb was an old town, but it was a tired old town when I first knew it. Let's try that again. Maycomb was an old town, but it was a tired old town when I first knew it. In rainy weather, the streets turned to red slop. Grass grew on the sidewalks. The, sagged in the, the courthouse sagged in the square. Somehow it was hotter then. A black dog suffered on a summer's day. Bony mules hitched to ho bony mules hitched to hoover carts flicked flies in the sweltering shade of the live oaks on the square. Men's stiff collars wilted by nine in the morning. Ladies bathed before noon, after their three o'clock naps, and by na 
Ladies bathe before noon after the, their three o'clock naps. What? Uh, wait. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. When they bathe. Ladies bathe before noon after their three o'clock naps and by nightfall were like soft tea cakes with frostings of sweat and sweet talcum. People moved slowly then. They ambled across the square, shuffled in and out of the stores around it, took their time about everything. A day was twenty-four hours long, but seemed longer. There was no hurry, for there was nowhere to go, nothing to buy, and no money to buy it with. Nothing to, to flip the page, nothing to see outside the boundaries of Macomb County. But it was a time of vague optimism for some of the people. Macomb County had recently been told that it had nothing to fear. Sorry, Macomb County had recently been told. Macomb County had recently been told that it had nothing to fear but fear itself. We lived on the main residential street in town. Atticus, Jem, and I, plus Calpurnia, Calpurnia, plus Calpurnia, Purnia, C A L P U R N I A. That's not a name I'm familiar with. Uh, so I forgive me if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Plus Calpurnia, our cook. Jim and I found our father satisfactory. He played with us, read to us, and treated us with courteous detachment. Calpurnia was something else again. She was all angles and bones. She was nearsighted, she squinted, her hand was wide as a bed slat, and twice as hard. She was always ordering me out of the kitchen, asking me why I couldn't behave as well as Jem when she knew he was older, and calling me home when I wasn't ready to come. Our battles were epic and one-sided. Calpurnia always won, mainly because Atticus always took her side. She had been with us ever since Jem was born, and I had felt a... And I fit uh, sorry, and I felt uh, sorry, and I had felt her tyrannical presence as long as I could remember. Our mother died when I was two, so I never felt her absence. She was a Graham from Montgomery. Atticus met her when he, Atticus met her, when he was first elected to the state legislature, legislature, legislature. Okay, let's try it again. She was a Graham from Montgomery. Atticus met her when he was first elected. When he was first elected to the state legislature, when he was when he was first elected to the state legislature, he was middle aged then. She was fifteen years his junior. Jem was the product of their first year of marriage. Four years later, I was born, and two years later, our mother died from a sudden heart attack. They said it ran in her family. I did not miss her, but I think Jem did. He remembered her clearly, and sometimes in the middle of a game. He would sigh at length, then go off and play by himself behind the car house. When he was like that, I knew better than to bother him. When I was almost six, and Jem was nearly ten, our summertime boundaries within calling distance of Calpurnia were Mrs. Henry Lafay. Oh boy, Lafayette, Lafayette, L A F A Y E W T E, Lafayette, Lafayette. I recognize the name, but I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, um, summertime boundaries within within calling distance of Capernia. Well, Mrs. Henry Lafayette de Bose's house, de Bo de Bose's. Wow, Mrs. Henry Lafayette de Bose's house, two doors to the north of us, and the Radley place, three doors to the south. We were never tempted to break them. The Radley place was inhabited by an unknown entity, the mere description of whom was enough to make us behave for days on end. Sorry, let's try it again.、Uh, the Radley place was inhabited by an unknown entity, the mere description of whom was enough to make us behave for days on end. Mrs. De Bose. Mrs. De Bose was plain hell. That was the summer Dill came to us.、Mm, no, that was the summer Dill came to us. Early one morning, as we were beginning our day's play in the backyard. Early one morning, as we were beginning our day's play in the backyard, Jem and I heard something next door. Uh, Jem and I heard something next door in Miss Rachel Haverford's collar patch. Collard. 
uh, Miss Rachel Haverford's collard patch. Collard. C A. Sorry. C O L L A R D. Collard. Collard. I don't. I'm not familiar with that word. Collard. Uh, like colander, like coriander. I, I don't know. Collard pa- patch. We went to the wire fence to see if there was a puppy. Miss Rachel's rat terrier was expecting. Instead, we found someone sitting looking at it. Instead, we found someone sitting looking at us. Sitting down, he wasn't much higher than the collards. We stared at him until he spoke. Hey. Hey yourself, said Jem pleasantly. I'm Charles Baker Harris, he said. I can read. So what, I said. I just thought you'd like to know I can read. You got anything that needs reading? I can do it. How old are you? Said I asked Jem. Four and a half? Going on seven? Shoot, no wonder then, said Jem, jerking his thumb at me. Scout yonder's been reading ever since she was born, and she ain't even starting to... <laughs> I'm now giving Jem a southern accent because of the fact that reading has an apostrophe next to it, so obviously he's got a bit of a southern accent. Scout's yonder, Scout yonder's been reading ever since she was born, and she ain't even started at school yet. She even she ain't even started to school yet. To school, not at school. Because uh it's all school can also be a verb. School you know, you know, to school someone. Ain't started to school yet. You look right beauty for going on seven. I'm little, but I'm old, he said. Jem brushed his hair back to get a better look. Jem brushed his hair back to get a better look. Why don't you come over why don't you come over, Charles Baker Harris? he said. Lord, what a name. It's not any funnier. It's not any funnier than yours. Aunt Rachel says your name's Jeremy Atticus Finch. Jem scowled. I'm big enough to fit mine, he said. Your name's longer than you are. It is a foot longer. Folks call me Dill, said Dill, struggling under the fence. Do better if you go over it instead of under it. Oh, whoops! No, that's not Jem. That was uh, the sister. Do better if you go over it instead of under it. I said. Where'd you come from? Dill was born from, sorry, Dill was from Meridian, Mississippi. There's a place called Meridian? Wow. Cool. Dill was from Meridian, Mississippi, was spending the summer with his aunt, Miss Rachel, and would be spending every summer in Maycomb from now on. His family was from Maycomb country originally, but his mother worked for a photographer in Meridian, and had, had entered, uh, sorry, his family was from Maycomb country, his family was from Maycomb County originally, but his mother worked for a photographer in Meridian, had entered his picture in a beautiful child contest, and won five dollars. And won five dollars. I said Dallas. Dallas. No. Dollars. Dollars. She gave the money to Dill, who went to the picture show twenty times on it. Don't sh- don't have any pictures down here except Jesus ones in the courthouse sometimes, said Jem. Ever seen an- ever see anything good? Um, you know what? It's just going to keep going, so I'm just... Sorry, folks. I'm just going to stop there because... Ooh, okay. Yeah, no. Uh, I have I have packing to do, and uh, as soon as this is over, I'm probably going to pack the microphone away to bring it with me to the States, and hopefully I can do some recording. One last recording. No, sorry. Two more recordings. One recording made on the plane, and one recording when I'm actually in the United States. God, it is 24 hours away. This is insane. What am I doing? I can't do this. I can't take this trip. This is madness. Madness. But I'm going anyway. Anyway, that was day 98. Day 98. Two more days to go. I said two more days yesterday, but um, this time it really is two more days to go. Uh, and that was To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee and uh, one of my favorite books when I was growing up and uh, read, it, read it in high school. Uh, it's been a while since I've read it, though, so I should probably read it again just to refresh my memory on why I found it so great. But I think I can probably see where, why I did find it so great from the blurb itself. Anyway, um, day 98 of 100 Days of Narration down. Tomorrow is day 99. I will attempt to record it while on the plane. I keep repeating that. I'm just hoping that if I can repeat it enough, it'll actually come true. Uh, see you all tomorrow. Yes. Yes. Hey, you seem like a cool, wonderful, and or awesome individual with impeccable taste in voice actors. 
So why not follow me on Facebook or Twitter? You can keep up with the latest projects I'm in, or that my friends are in, or that you could be in because I occasionally post links to open editions to various projects that require voice acting out there, or that nobody's in, but they're interesting projects nonetheless that you may also find interesting. Also, lots of random thoughts about whatever's on my mind at that particular moment. Usually it's about food or video games or foodie video games. Mm. Anyway, you can follow me on Facebook at Omadon VA or Twitter at Omadon. Hope to see you there.